from Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. Listen, fellas, I want more money. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. We're going to do something a little different this hour. And here it is. I don't think anybody that I know of personally is happy about what's happening in this country right now, about the stock market being down, about people losing their jobs. Here we are in the holiday season, people losing their jobs. Banks in trouble. Stories about big business every day. And even if you're one of those haters of big business, I'm not a hater of big business. I'm a capitalist. I uh, I don't hate General Motors. I, in fact, uh, want to see them thrive. I don't hate any big business. I want to see them do well. I do. But um, even the haters of big business uh, uh, cannot be happy about what's going on. All the uncertainty in the world. I wake up every day, every day, and I get phone calls from people I know who've lost their jobs. And they're not all radio people. Don't don't get the idea this is a radio thing. This is just a thing. I know people in many kinds of businesses. I know stockbrokers. I know people who have retail jobs. Hell, my, uh, my brother uh, is a prison guard. I know people with all kinds of jobs. Every day now, I get calls in the morning from people telling me that they lost their job or a neighbor lost a job, somebody else lost a job. Over and over and over, I'm getting these calls. It's sad. And yet, I get an occasional email from someone I consider to be a nut. I've gotten more than one of them. And that is the uh, the letter that comes in occasionally from somebody who says, I am thrilled that everything's going to hell. I am thrilled that the system is collapsing. I suspect these people are communists or socialists or or broke. I suspect that they uh, have not accomplished anything in life and they have sat by and watched as others have marched past them and made more money than they did and had better jobs than they had and had more experiences than they did were able to travel more than they did, owned homes, raised families, had real fun. And I imagine these are the people who sit on the sidelines all the time and don't participate, don't care. I don't get a ton of letters from people like that, but there are people out there who are just giddy. The worse it gets, the happier they are. So I thought it might be interesting to explore the psyche of people like that. To talk to people like that. I'm sure there are people listening to this show right now who are just thrilled that the economic system is in turmoil. That people are losing their jobs every day. That there are cuts. I'll bet there are people out there every single day who are cheering when they hear another big name company going under. You know, when they hear that a Mervins is going out of business, or a Linens and Things, or a Shoe Pavilion, or when they hear that Citigroup needed to get help because uh, they had financial problems. I'm sure there are people out there who are happy about this. I know it because I hear from them. So I'm going to give those people an opportunity to tell me why they feel that way. First of all, why would anybody be happy about what's going on? There is a human price being paid here. And I don't think we've scratched the surface yet. I think it's going to get worse before it gets better. It'll get better, and there'll be light at the end of the tunnel. But we are still firmly in the tunnel. We are not on the way out yet. So um, if you are one of those people, if you're one of those people who just, you know, stands up and cheers any time you hear about another big company in trouble... Anytime you hear about uh, the finances of a company or you hear about companies being delisted on the stock exchange or you hear that another 1,000, 5,000, 10,000 people have lost their jobs, unemployment is up, 
Unemployment claims are up. Foreclosures are up. If you're one of the people out there who is excited about this, who is happy about this, who says, you see, this goes to show you capitalism is wrong, or you see, all that big business is ruining everything. If you're one of those people, I want to talk to you. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Okay. They may be strange, but I want to talk to the people who are happy about our economic plight in this country. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Here's Anthony on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Tommy. What's going on, man? Tommy, doing great. Hey, you know, man, I can't believe I was able to get through. This is great. Neither can I. For, for eons, believe it or not. Sometimes I've held for I don't know hours. I am thrilled. You know, and um, you're probably going to say that I'm a hater. I have nothing going for me. But I am thrilled because, um, you know, for years I, I see companies taking advantage of the consumer. Um, you know, companies heartless. You know, numerous things, you know. And, and, it, and I think the society is a joke because, um, you know, you have, you, sh- you know, they rely on having an army of unemployed people so they can keep wages down. And, um, but then you have... Um, and so you're happy that unemployment is up. In, in a way, yeah. You know, so you mean, are, on the one hand, you are angry because you believe that the system depends upon unemployed people uh, to keep wages down, but you're happy that there's even more unemployed people. No, I'm not angry. I'm just realistic. I'm just realistic. You know, I mean, um, I have a degree. I have a degree from a good university. And I, it's just realistic. I mean, that's how it works. Um, it's just, you know, society puts this facade, and it's just, it's so false. Um, you know, you have, uh, and I mean, I'm not hating. I have a lot of family members who are, who are longshoremen. And, um, you know, half of them are like thugs. No education. They're d- dumb as a doorknob. And, uh, you know, they're making all this money. It's a joke. And then you have other people in education, you have other people, you know, like social workers and things like that, that supposedly they're trying to make society better, but they get nothing. You know, it's it's very lopsided. And then you have a period, and I mean, you know, I, I'm old enough to see the, you know, the the times when house prices were going, were being shot up, and then all of a sudden they come plummeting down. Um, and it's just, you know, people manipulating the system. It's a joke. I serve my country. I was in the military, so no one can say, hey, you haven't done anything for your country. You know, I have, a, I have, you know, two degrees. So what would you like to see happen now that you fought for your country? Socialism? No, not socialism, because, um, you know, for socialism to work, you know, people would get, you know, taxed a lot. Um, I, I would like probably to change the system where we can have true checked and balances, you know, to really to really have a say in the way things are, you know, are conducted. Um, you know, you, you have these, you know, all these white-collar crimes, and, you know, they get away with it. Um, you know, another good example is, like, you know, with the youth. Um, I remember, you know, you know, my, my dad, you know, if, if I did something, you know, he, he'd Give me a good a good whipping, you know. Put me in check. Um, and we have prisons. We have prisons, you know, to to deter people from from doing crimes. Yeah, some people, you know, they continue to do crimes, but most most people who go to jail because of something that they did, they're not going to do it again because of the fear of going back to jail. Well, we have too many bleeding hearts, also. You know, we have too many bleeding hearts. Well, this is wait, wait. Now we're going off topic here because uh, the fact that the economy is in the crapper is not going to change that. 
it all stems from that, Tom. It all, it all, it all, it all it's all interesting. Uh, let me tell you something. Now, now that the economy's in the crapper, look for a big increase in crime, not a decrease. You know, um, but, you know, yeah, you, you could probably say that. You not could, you probably, probably saying. Say I've been through this before. I was through it in the 70s. And I'm going to tell you, that's what happens. Have you ever seen those old movies, those old Charles Bronson movies called Death Wish, Death Wish yes, 2, Death Wish 3? Right. They were a reaction to the time. Uh, the, the, these were uh, uh, the Death Wish movies. Charles Bronson plays this vigilante who looks like your normal next-door neighbor type who uh, by night is going into the city streets and shooting anyone he sees committing crimes. And, well, you know, I, and, I and that's that, because there that was society that's because there was so much crime at that time, and that's because the economy was in the crapper. Nineteen seventy five is when nineteen seventy five is when New York City declared bankruptcy. New York City declared bankruptcy. I mean, and you know, and people were running you know, wild in the numbers. streets. You have numbers of unemployment. You know, those numbers those numbers are so you know, they're they're so light. You know, those, those numbers are so light. There's a lot more people who don't go out and, and try to get um, unemployment. Those numbers, all the all unemployment numbers are based on, you know, people that go and get, you know, file for unemployment. There's a lot of people who don't even file for unemployment because that's another joke. You know, you can be making a lot of money and then all of a sudden, you know, you go to school. And I'm saying this because it happened to me. But you we know, are going to have a lot more crime. Yeah, You know what? You're zigzagging all over the place here. On one hand, you're saying you know, unemployment is artificially kept high keep wages low, uh, then you're uh, saying how happy you are that unemployment is up. You're, you're saying both things here. So anyway, thank you. Thank you for giving it a shot here. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This hour I'm talking to people who see that the economy is in the crapper, the country's in trouble, and they're happy about it. Let's say hello here to uh, Scott on the Tom Likas show. Hey, Tom. How you doing today? Okay. Good. Hey, you were so right about the crime thing. That's part of what's keeping me in business right now. The crime going up is, I, uh, I'm happy about what's going on right now just because I finished college. I got my degree. I did things right. And now I'm watching all the people who didn't work hard, didn't do what they were supposed to do. They're losing their jobs, going out of business, you know, and the cream's rising to the top and it's making me real happy. And what kind of business are you in? Um, electrical distribution. And we're seeing because people are stealing so much of the copper and the wiring, people have to come to me and buy the buy some more. So I, I, the contractors kit too. They're not uh, they they have very little business right now. But uh, wire being stolen is keeping a few of them in business. So you know it, it's sad that people have to resort to crime to get it done. But you know it's uh, the housing prices have come down for me, and you know I'm looking at maybe being actually able to buy a house in a year or two at a price that I can afford instead of these inflated prices that these people are losing their homes for. Scott, thank you for that. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's Daniel on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Good morning, Dad. How you doing? Good morning. Where are you calling from, Africa? Oh, my God. I'm in, I'm in Burbank. Ah. What's the time zone over there? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, I just want to get on the, on the subject really fast. I, I think it's great to watch all these big people, you know, who, who've always looked down on the on the smaller people. I mean, don't get me wrong. I know some of the smaller people are actually being affected by this, too. But to see these big guys who had all this power for so long just dumped, flushed, you know, they're out of work. You know, now now they can actually see it from a, from a small man's point of view. So, so you like seeing it. How far would you like to see it go? You know what? You know they they talk about you know redistribution of wealth and stuff like this. I think I think this will actually get you know. I mean, after after the flow is done and everything's dropped to the bottom, you know, I think that you know when when things start actually lifting up, you know, you know the people who were on the bottom and the people who were on the top. It, it, I think it's kind of going to going to level out a little bit. You know. How do you think it's going to level out? Well, um, like uh, your last caller said, you know, I mean, crime's going up, you know, and, you know, in my business, people are, are, are still in copper as well, you know. I mean, I'm in, I'm in plumbing. Uh, I'm replacing, you know, these, you know, water regulators all over town. You know, that's giving someone like me who was making, you know, 14, 15, 16 bucks an hour, you know, it, it's keeping us alive. 
but at the same time, these bigger, these, the richer isn't necessarily getting richer, you know, and the poorer, you know, is, well, probably going to keep getting poorer, but, you know, it, it, it's kind of, you know, leveling things out for everybody. All right, Daniel, thank you for that. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. I'm talking to people who look at our economic card times and they're saying, hey, this is fantastic. This is great. 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's Paul on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, I'm down Venice Beach hanging and banging. Hey. This time. <laughs> you got to come down sometime. Sounds good to me. <laughs> I'm I'm excited. I I retired uh in 94 uh at a very young age. I started working uh I quit college and and my parents were upset, but the very next year I was making uh more uh than my father ever made by opening up a business. He was doing great. And when doing great at a low level, everybody's on your case. Everybody wants to ride on your coattails and uh, they dogged me and made me work like a dog for over 10 years and uh, finally after the insurance companies and the lawyers and the charities and everybody was just give me money give me money give me money i had a chance to sell out and everybody thought i was going to go right back into business but i could see the writing on the wall the way this country was going i took the money and i ran to california and i've been hanging and banging ever since now, well, uh, where is your money kept? I mean, do you have it in a bank? I have, it, I have it in uh, what they call immediate annuities. You know what that is? No. An immediate annuity is you get, like, uh, say, a million dollars, and you give it to a uh, party uh, insurance-type people that they can invest, like, maybe 100000 out of that million and... Uh, you know, so that you can never lose a payment that they're going to give you from a month to month. And it's a uh, great, I think I would imagine it would be the perfect thing for you. Uh, it, it, um, uh, uh, like it, you can't lose money, in other words. You, 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 can't, you, you never touch, money, you never you touch the principal. Back. You're just getting, getting a little bit of the principal back and the rest is all dividends or capital gains or whatever it is. Yeah, they get to keep the rest of it and you, you guarantee so much a month or so much a year or whatever whatever arrangements you make but you know it works out great at first i was very against it because it's like what i got to give all my money away just to be secure and now that this is going on i'm so happy because the only way that i could really lose everything is if the the whole united states collapses uh, not, well wait a minute it seems like we're not far from it well, I don't think it's going to be, because you got to remember, there's a lot of rich people out there who come from wealthy money. And if you, I, I'm surprised uh, you're not talking about this. If I have five or six million in the bank right now from, you know, daddy's trust fund, what do I care? I can go out and buy 20 houses right now and buy brand new cars and have a ball still. It's really the, the little people don't realize that, I don't think. I think what's happening is the rich people are being kind of hush-hush about it. I'm sure these Ford executives or whatever executives, you know, they might lose their business, but they're still going to retire in Boca Raton. I, I know a guy who built a, a high school and it sank, and he's living in Boca Raton with the, the profit he made on the side, you know, as far as uh, what his actual payments are. So none of these rich people are going to be hurting. I mean, they might have to give up their house in Malibu and move down to Long Beach, but they're not going to be, you know, on Venice Beach with the rest of the handout people, you know, begging for scraps, that's for sure. You know that. <laughs> Paul, thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Jay on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Jay. How are you? Great. I know. With a salary like that, you must be. Let me tell you. <laughs> hey, well, Tom, I think this is kind of good for guys like me in my situation. Uh, allow me to elaborate a little bit with you. Um, 27 years old, kind of new to equity markets, started kind of getting in a little bit towards July. Um, and, uh, actually I haven't done too bad. I kind of, kind of foresaw a lot of this stuff coming. I used to work in the real estate finance business, ended up short in some of these, uh, these debacles that ended up going down actually did pretty well. Um, I mean, I, I'm just kind of excited just with, with, with the way everything's changing. I think we're going to be in a good situation here coming out of this. I think people are going to learn to live a little bit more responsibly all that money that was flying out of people's home equity loan, like an ATM, so they can go down to Best Buy and buy a 60-inch plasma when the guy's making 45 grand a year. You know, I mean, that's all gonna. Those days are over with. I think people are gonna kind of get back to the normal, you know, to saving and to just kind of, you know, recognizing what's important as far as building wealth and not 
you know, driving a Mercedes Benz with uh, 24 inch rims on it. Yeah, well, they've seen enough music videos advocating that. Maybe now they're going to see what uh, what the reality is. Yeah, I think things are going to change. I mean, we're definitely we're going to go into a period. I mean, I, I think you know we're in for a period where people are going to kind of start being a little bit more humble. I mean, you're already starting to see it kind of change, like in pop culture. You always say that like black people are ahead of the curve. I mean, if you if you watch it kind of now, I mean, just I mean, I just it, it, there's a lot of stuff that's going to be changing out there. I think the, the new world we're in for, you know, if, if we do it right this time around, as far as, you know, not making a lot of the mistakes that people made in the past, I mean, I think we could be in a good situation for guys like me. Jay, thank you for that. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. I'm talking to people who are happy, happy to see the economic strife the country's going through right now. If that's you, call me. Tom like it. one 800 Five eight hundred Tom one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six six. The Tom Likas Show. Click on the list of live button beginning at two p.m. Saturday, Pacific time, and there will be one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. I'm talking to people who are happy. To see the United States going through all the economic hard times we're going through. Let's say hello here to Victor on the Tom Likas show. Hey, what's going on, Tom? It's a pleasure. Doing great, Victor. Okay, I'm just, I just want to say uh, I'm not truly happy, but now that we're in it, I don't think we should uh, bail them out. You don't think we should bail people out? Yeah, I agree with you. I don't think we should bail people out. Um, yeah, it's sad to see it not bail not bail out because a lot of people will lose jobs, and uh, if we don't bail them out, you know, more people will lose jobs. But uh, I think the end result at the end of the tunnel, like you're saying, is going to be new owners, uh, new ideas, and uh, rehire again. So we're going to be back up. You know, it's going to be like I said, it's going to be down for a while. But once we get back up, it should be good, right? Well, I I think I agree with the new president, uh, Barack Obama. I agree that uh, ultimately that uh, we're going to be leaner and meaner once we flush some of the dead wood out, once we cut some of the fat. Yeah. Uh, I think that's what's going to happen. I do think we're going to be better off, and I think we're going to have at that time, let me tell you, the, the good news is after all of this, we're going to have an extended period of growth. We're going to have extended uh, increases in the stock market. We're going to have extended increases in job creation. And uh, we're going to have a... Uh, a period of economic prosperity like we haven't had in a long time. Because that is what follows hard yeah. times like the ones we're in now. That's yeah, well, what history tells us, and that's what we will see. And that's what uh, that's what I believe. I just think that, uh, what about this car thing, uh, this car company bailout? If they don't bail them out, do you think uh, another company will buy it, like from another... Uh, another well, like, that, you mean like from state? another country or something? Well, that could happen. Um, I don't know how likely that is, but I, that could happen. Yeah, so if that does happen, that's real bad news then, right? Well, I don't know if it's bad news. I mean, uh, you know, the important thing they keep saying is jobs. So if a foreign company bought General Motors and continued to operate it uh, in this country, that would preserve jobs, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, okay, and the thing well, is, they 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 they're all over the road. And uh, that one minute they say it's all about jobs, another minute they go, "Ooh, well, what if a foreign country came in here? It would be terrible." Well, not if they preserve those jobs. Not if people true. keep building cars. That is very true. It doesn't so, really uh, matter yeah, who's well, employing them. You know what? The, the companies here don't have the money to pay people. So, are you yourself happy? Uh, the economy's going down. No, I'm not happy the economy's going down. Uh, I am invested in the stock market, and I am in negative numbers, like most people who are in the stock market. Um, I do not want to uh, see the economy crash and burn. I will say that during this period of time, because I have a job, I have continued investing as the prices have gone down. Yeah. Because I do believe that in a couple of years, we're going to see an extended period of growth. And I want to have my money invested when we get there. Yep, true. So uh, thank you very much, Tom. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a great listener, and uh, could you take me out, Bong style? Yes. Here you go, Victor. <coughs> it's one 800 tom I'm talking to people who are happy about the United States being in economic hard times. Alex on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, 
Hello, Tom. Hi. Um, basically, um, I'm happy for the for the other countries and for those countries, especially that we went into with our troops. And I think we are having economic hardships because because of these wars and because of these unneeded wars that uh, we declared and that we we are uh, conducting. And uh, I think this could be uh, uh, one more uh, sign, one more kind of big signal that America is not perfect. I mean, it's not forever. It can't be ruling the world all the time. I mean, come on. Uh, we are great. We are a superpower. But um, we cannot go, you know, anywhere we point in the map and just I don't think there are, you know, uh, 250,000 troops or 100,000 or how many. Uh, whatever, and and this is one more sign that uh, our financial system is not perfect too, and it was it was never perfect, and and this is um, uh, I believe that uh, our big brothers and in financial institutions uh, uh, now understanding that uh, uh, what they have been doing. And their greed and all that. Uh, well, what, what, when do you say greed? What, what what do you mean by greed? I mean, uh, uh, look at those um, like interest rates and you know uh, all the system. I mean, it's 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 all crap. All the credit cards and all the credit system. It's all it's all crap. It's um, yeah. Well, I mean. All this happened why? Because we had big interest rates, and you know people could not pay their money. And well, we didn't. Well, wait a minute. Um, no, that is not because we had big interest rates. On the contrary, it's because we had low interest rates, and uh, people went ahead and bought houses that they couldn't afford simply because the interest rates were low, not high. Yeah, but uh, at the same time, uh, interest rates were if, if they were low. I mean. You know, um, people could not pay for it, and well, our system. I mean, it was not. It was. It's not true. It's, it's not correct. You know. What's not correct? Um, all the all those uh, all those money, like let's for example, our credit card. It's all fake. It's it's not. There is no real money under it. It's it's just money created in in the, in the computer. You know, if they give you a loan, it's money created in the computer database. That's it. And you return it, and it goes back to the computer, and that's how all the money. Uh, statistically, all I know is ninety seven percent of uh, dollar uh, all is all in computers, and it. I mean. Well, that is, but it still represents money. And the fact is that uh, if you go to Sports Chalet and buy a basketball and you put down your credit card, and then you get a bill at the end of the month for a basketball on your credit card, uh, you're going to pay money to pay for that basketball, which, you, you know, American Express or Visa or MasterCard fronted you the money to buy it. Yeah, but, but when you apply for the credit card, they don't give you the money that they have, they give you the money. That will be created in the computer. That's it. But that's not true. For example, American Express has been a big story. American Express, uh, today, that's, that's, today that's, the story, if you look at today's Los Angeles Times, American Express just sold bonds uh, so that uh, people could invest in these bonds, get paid interest, and that American Express would take that money to use to buy the basketball for you because uh, they were shut out of credit markets like a lot of other companies. Well, um, there I is think, real I, money behind it. You just don't understand how it works. Um, anyway, I think the system is it's, it needs to be renovated, and we need something more stable, something more realistic, rather than you know computer uh, computer database created. Well, again, you're repeating the same stuff over and over, and I don't—I just don't think you understand uh, what there is to the system, the good, the bad, or whatever. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, I'm talking to people who are happy to see the United States in such uh, uh, dire straits financially. It is Pedro on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How you doing, Papa? I'm doing okay, Pedro. I'm great. About time you get a topic out here that gives me in the mood to call, man. Well, this finally economy. it happened. Finally happened. This economy. I'm so glad it crashed. 
this American society is so caught up in the comfort zone that it takes something this drastic for things to change. Things have to change in this country, and, and, and unfortunately, something of this nature is going to have to boil the water over the over the cup. You understand, Papa? And let me ask you a question. Did, is it just my imagination? Or did people's fascination with rich people like Paris Hilton suddenly go by the boards? I mean, you don't even hear much about Paris Hilton anymore. Does that have something to do with the economy cratering? Oh, man, that has nothing to do with the economy. That's just people, publicity, TMZ, all that stuff. That has nothing to do with the economy. The economy is we need to stop paying for people in prison that's doing in life. Any life for in prison needs to be dead. No more baloney fans. Kill them! Just kill them! Get rid of them. That's one thing that it, you and me, Tom, are paying out of our pockets. Don't you <laughs> that. Well, that's, that's a whole other issue that I don't think relates to what we're talking about. But thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's our telephone number. Miguel on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Miguel. What's up, Tom? Not much. Just doing a radio show. <laughs> this is fantastic, Tom. I think uh, I think this definitely opens up the opportunity for reform. Um, it's def I can't even imagine the the quality and the amount of uh, of uh, I guess focus on um, on the product that we're actually going to be consuming later on after these times are over. Of course, I don't like what's happening. I do believe it's actually really good when big companies are going down because. I'm sure everyone can relate uh, as far as to when you go and you purchase something, you take it back, and people just really don't care as far as to uh, the quality of their service or the product. You know, it's, it, you kind of get passed on as just another person. Um, now it's, it's going to be more about uh, what they're actually selling. You know, is it good? Are you actually going to – everybody's going to be thinking about what they're purchasing now. And uh, on top of that, the, the employees – now, like the the regular employees, people that it's that, that now it's trickled down to, because they are themselves are afraid for a job. They actually seem to care now. Um, on top of that, I also wanted to mention that I did see this coming. Uh, reason being was because simply that. I mean, you pretty much go anywhere nowadays, and they really don't care about the sale. The sale would just you know whatever. Fine, you guys don't want to buy, go somewhere else, whatever. So now. When I go into a store, it's like everybody wants to help, and, and, and you know, they're all so concerned. And, um, you know, that, that, it, pretty much, period point blank, this opens up the door for young entrepreneurs that are actually concerned about their product, what they're selling, and the quality, and they believe, like, people like myself believe in a... Uh, in, uh, but if nobody's got just, money, who's going to buy your product? Exactly. I, I understand that. I understand that. I, there there are a lot of people that are pretty much, and I like to call them sleepers, only because they are just chilling. You know, people people like myself, they got a good job. You know, they know that their work is uh, definitely appreciated. So they're going to have jobs, and there's going to be a market out there of young people who are willing to spend. You know, they're, they're mindful of what they're spending on and who they're buying from. So... If you got a, a bunch of people that are just pretty much just selling just for the heck of it, they just have a job, they're just doing it just to do it so they can go home and watch Paris Hilton, all those people that, that are not paying attention anymore, now that's because they're being forced. They're being forced to pay attention to what's going on now. That's why they're not paying attention to Paris Hilton and all that crap. All right, Miguel, thank you for the call. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show from Hollywood. Short of commercial breaks now. We take more calls, we take them faster. Better chance for you to get in at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. I'm talking to people this hour who are happy to see the United States economy in trouble. Let's say hello to Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yeah, Tom, how you doing? Doing yes, great. I care. Doing great. Good, good. good. Well, here's the thing. I'm, I'm happy about the economy in one way, and I'm pretty, I'm pretty pissed about it in the other. Uh, the the good thing is that the Kings tickets are on blowout now because they 
get people into the stadium. So I get I get center ice, seventeen rows up for forty bucks a ticket. That's good. Wow, those, those tickets are a little better than yours too now. Uh, but well, <laughs> that's that's your opinion. I, I happen to like being down by the glass where I sit now. At the Kings games, I could see the whole ice. Not, I don't miss even a little piece of it. Well, you you sit behind uh, the Kings shoot twice, Matt, right? No, I, I, oh, okay. I no, I don't. I sit on ice seats now. Oh, okay. You were the, you were there some time before because I remember seeing you there a couple years back. I yeah, think. that one time I was yes, but I I move I moved the year after they moved the goal lines back. If you oh, okay. recall, they okay. expanded the neutral zone, and that meant the goal lines moved back. That meant from my seat, I could not see uh, whether the buck was in the net. Right. Okay. I stand corrected then, Tom. You still have seats that are comparable to the ones I'm getting. But, no, in, in reality, um, you know, everything is getting cheaper. So for people who do have a steady job, it's good. But the bad thing is, I mean, I'm pretty young, and I just got out of college, got my first real job, and uh, I'm still at home helping the parents out because... You know, they're having trouble making ends meet because of the economy. You know, my, my parents are a little older now. They they don't have a job anymore because of what's going on now. It's hard for them to find a job. So good and bad. And any of these people that are really excited about the economy really being bad, other than for reasons that you can go to a Kings game or, or go see something a little bit cheaper, in my opinion, they're pretty much donkeys because there's people out there that can't even keep houses anymore. And, and you know what? Most most For most of the people, it's their own fault. But for some of, their pe- some of the people... I have no fault of their own. I mean, they have good mortgages. They have, you know, they they spend within their means. But you know, you just lose your job because everything else is slowing down. So, I, ha- I have to say, some of those guys are donkeys, anyways. But well, there you go, donkeys. Thank you for that. Well, the parade continues. Companies are going out of business or filing bankruptcy. Here's the latest: Easy Loop. Easy Loop filed for bankruptcy protection, saying it had been hurt by the economic downturn and has put itself up for sale. The company, which runs about 82 vehicle oil change locations, mostly here in California and in Arizona, has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in U.S. Bankruptcy Court uh, for the District of Delaware, uh, along with um, its affiliate, which is called Express Lube Tech. Hmm. So I think the creditors of Easy Lube are about to get lubed right now. <laughs> what? So just, it's just another company filing for bankruptcy. Yesterday it was Tribune. A couple of weeks ago it was Mervyn's, Circuit City. I mean, the list is long. Long. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. You tell me, are you happy that the economy is in such dire straits? Let's say hello to Jason on the Tom Likas show. Hey, Tom. Hey. Hey, great to talk to you, man. Um, So, yeah, I've always been blue-collar kind of worker, never really been invested in much, and uh, I'm doing great right now. I've been just working steady. I'm raking in all the deals that are coming up at all the stores right now, and my job's pretty secure. I work in the warehouse business, and I'm warehouse manager. And as long as people have companies that need product brought in a warehouse, I'm going to be fine. Of course, I don't know if there's more than one person working there. Couldn't they decide they could do it with one less? I'm the only guy in my company. I, I run the whole warehouse just by myself, so feeling good about that. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I've heard a lot of people uh, very... Uh... <laughs> Uh, very uh, uh, proud of themselves and talking about how they're never going to lose their jobs. I've spoken to many who have. Well, I have no delusions that um, I'm irreplaceable or anything. You know, um, I'm pretty handy. I have no forklift accidents in four years, you know, good track record. Uh, so, I mean, I got a good record, good resume, but no, I don't think I'm irreplaceable. But, um, but what you, know, you say, what you say is true. That if you have a job and you have money, uh, the advantage of what's going on now is uh, so many things are on sale. Not the least of which is gasoline. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like I, I just, I'm doing so much better right now of getting these great deals that are like, like it uh, got a big old uh, LCD TV on the real cheap right now because people aren't buying them as much, so they're marking them down. And you know, I'm stoked that I got my good TV now. And, um, you know, I'm not losing anything, definitely. Um, you know, I even found a cheaper apartment out here in Orange County. I mean, the prices even seem to be going down here, and it seemed like that was impossible. Well, it does seem impossible because where are the people moving who are living in those apartments? They're not buying houses. 
Are they living under freeway underpasses? Where are they moving to? I have no idea where they're going, Tom, but uh, I'm living comfortable now. I just moved into a way better place than I was in. Uh, so you're better uh, off now, is what you're saying? Uh, for the time being, I guess. Uh, I figure it could change. I mean, it could take a turn for my company for the worst, and then I'm out too. But for the time being, yeah, I'm sitting pretty. I'm feeling good. Thank you, Jason, for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Don on the Tom Like a Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. First time, long time, man. Hey. Good to talk to you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> a few points um, I'd like to make. Uh, I'm not ecstatic that, you know, things are going bad for a lot of the workers. But, uh, you know, we're thinning out the herd right now. It's a cyclical event, even though we have some very specific variables uh, that put us here. It's cyclical. This is uh, a necessary evil. It's going to help, uh, let's say, the uh, car factories retool and, hey, actually sell cars that people want to buy that don't guzzle gas. I know you're not a big SUV fan. Uh, this is a perfect example of it. You know, we're going to thin out the herd. And you also mentioned before that, you know, you should anticipate good times and bad times by uh, saving money, being, you know, having a whole uh, year's worth of, uh, of money stored away. You know, that's not only on the individual level. The corporation should have done the same. You know, they should have anticipated bad times, and clearly it hasn't happened. So that's at least my views. I'm curious what you think of it. Well, uh, you know, there's certainly some truth in that. I mean, uh, as I said earlier, ultimately, I do believe we're going to have an extended period of economic growth uh, the likes of which uh, I think we've never seen in our lifetime. Uh, but that's not until we go through all of this pain. Yeah, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Right. Absolutely, it's not going to be. Un it's not going to be unlike what happened after the depression of 1929 to 1933 or 34. Or so, uh, what you're going to see is, uh, if you recall, uh, around the time uh, World War II began, the American economy started coming out of the funk. And by the late 40s, everything was out of control. And I think you're going to see something along those lines. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Don't forget, you can hear us on Saturdays now, six days a week, 2 to 6 p.m. on Saturdays. Hope you'll tune in every goddamn day. The Tom Likas Show.